think everyone's pretty much identified the issue here that Kyle has way too much responsibility. And while he's shown aptitude and gotten results as a offensive coach, he hasn't as a personnel guy. And if you'd rather have Kyle the coach or Kyle the GM, everyone's picking Kyle the coach. So if the solution this offseason, if they miss the playoffs, is bring in a strong GM, you know, someone like Les Snead, Steve Keim, and then recreate that kind of environment here, seems so easy, right? That's what you got to do. It's what the Niners are missing. Are there ways that that could be more uh, complicated? Yeah, so there's a lot of ways this could be more complicated. First things first, in regards to the strong GM, I've already been on the record, right? I, I got out a little bit in front of this. If they were hiring a GM to me, Jeff Ireland's the guy. He has experience doing it. He was with he's a Parcells guy. He built uh the original Wildcat offense, Tony Sperano in Miami. And now since he's gone to New Orleans in 2016, New Orleans has been one of the best drafting teams in the NFL. Look at their I mean, draft record since 2016. It's yeah, astonishing. it's unbelievable. And to yeah. me, Mickey Loomis, who's been there for 15 years, it's not all him because there's a change that happened in 2016 with the New Orleans Saints. And to me, that changes Jeff Ireland. So that's who I think should be the next GM of the 49ers. The issue is if Kyle Shanahan wanted a strong GM, a strong GM would have been hired in 2017 itself. There's a reason they hired the broadcaster who interned once uh, with the Denver Broncos. And that reason is because Kyle Shanahan wanted somebody who could work in concert with him that's going to just try to abide to what he wants to do. Because he can't be in control in the sense that he can't be on the phone, you know, making trades or signing undrafted free agents. But he wants to be in control of who you're trying to trade for, who you're trying to draft and all of that. And then the GM's job is to implement that. And that's what that's essentially what John Lynch has been doing, in my opinion, from my vantage point. Could be totally wrong. But that's the way I perceive what's going on within the 49ers organization. The issue with that to me, it, with hiring a strong GM today, is that if you hire a Jeff Ireland, to me, he he can't be hired to be Kyle Shanahan's number two the way John Lynch is, but just a better personnel guy. Why would he take that job? He's already Mickey Loomis's number two. Um I, I think he would want to come in and he would want to have the he would want to have the full autonomy and Kyle Shanahan would answer to him. And I think that's where you would it would also, be. I don't think anyone tough. I don't think any strong GM in 2021 would say I need Parag Marat. I can't the salary cap. What is this? I need someone to help me understand the financial most aspect teams, of the sport. Most, that's teams, me. most teams manage the cap fantastically yeah. in 2021. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, most teams do. It's it's honestly. Just, Honestly, Parag took advantage of boomers in 2001. He was like, you guys don't understand this stuff. Let me look. This is Microsoft Excel. Okay. I got it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was, but he kind of, like he, he really came in like right when technology was taken over and a bunch of people had no clue how to make that transition anyway. Times have changed. I don't think Parag, need, I mean, he can have a role, but he's so powerful. I think that's another impediment to a strong GM. And, and how I strong that, can I be? Or, or is it is it a partnership between me and Parag or whatever? And yeah. I also think that that leads to difficulty for the 49ers to make any structural changes. Because to me, Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch have to be brought in together and they have to leave together. I you can't. That. You can't uh, you can't fire John Lynch and then bring in another GM. That doesn't really work because that GM is going to want to pick his coach, even if Kyle right. Shanahan is very talented in his opinion, because he's going to want to have build the organization in the direction he wants to go. And then you can't tell Kyle Shanahan, we just let you trade up this much to go get a quarterback and all of that. And now we just want you to focus on coaching. If we're going to let this guy who's not been a part of this process for five years come in and do all the thinking. first steps. I mean, stuff. it's just not good. That's a forced uh, and arranged marriage that's probably doomed from the beginning none of see that and that's the big problem right now like I, I think there's a lot of ways to identify the issues and i think all of us are able to identify them heck i i think even the national media is starting to identify all these issues that you know more local people who just follow this team fans and everybody has been identifying the issue is that it's really hard to fix these things without blowing everything up like to the point where it gets really bad, like Chip Kelly, Jim Top Sula bad for a little while, and then you come back to building also, something. It's a it's an ownership issue. The 40 you could you could hire you could fire John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan and say that's the right move. But who but do you have back to Jed York and, and Parag Marath leading a coaching search? Like they couldn't find anything. I mean, you don't want them leading your search, but they're and, gonna they're going to. And, right. And philosophically, I mean, you look at Jed York's 
coaching hires. It's a little Jimmy Haslam like where, you know, Jimmy Haslam hired Paul D. Podesta and Paul D. Podesta had a clear vision uh, on what type of coach he wanted to hire. He fired John Dorsey when he hired the coach he didn't want. I'm sorry. Okay, got yeah, it. I'm talking about the Browns. Yeah. Yes, yes. Right. And they had a clear vision. They want an analytical GM and a coach who believes in analytical decision making on fourth down and all of that. And Kevin Stefanski like fit that mold and they wanted a good speaker. And they they had a set. What is Jed York and Prague Barate's vision on what they want as a head coach? They've had the CEO type Jim Harbaugh. They've had Mike Nolan, who's a, got a defensive background. They've got the motivator in uh, Mike Singletary. They've had the X's and O's genius in Chip Kelly, coach, Kyle Harbaugh. Shanahan. They've had the uh, motivator in John T- Jim Tom Sula. What are they looking for and saying that, okay, this is what we want at the head of our organization? Because you know why the Pittsburgh Steelers are a successful organization? It goes beyond their structure. Look at Bill Cowher. Look at Mike Tomlin. They all fit the same mold of the style of head coach that they want. And what kills me about the Niners, okay, so the, Ni- the Steelers have a brand, right, that they've stuck to since the 70s. And some people might think they're a little old school and out of uh, sync with the times, but they win. The Niners had a brand. Niners had a brand, but it's gone. And the Yorks are just ruining its name. It's like it's like your favorite restaurant got sold and they just ruined it. And the menu's different and the service isn't as good. And you're like, oh man, I used to come here. I don't I, I didn't know what the this. price was. I like being here. Now it's like it's not the same. Let it's me ask you this. Did they have a brand or were they just the organization that hired Bill Walsh to build it? Nah, man. It wasn't just Bill Walsh. It was Bill Walsh. It was John McVay. It was George Seifert. Like, I felt they were the they were the Patriots before the Patriots. They really ha- had 20 years of sustained success. Mm-hmm. No doubt. And I, no doubt. You know, I, I mean, I think they were pretty much the standard in American sports of how to have sustained success. And then and then the Yorks came in. I mean, DeBartolo messed up, but the Yorks came in and really took it a different direction. And nothing they've done has worked. Nothing. And it, it's, it's it's difficult. They can play right? bad luck. It's really hard. And that's where I just I have to ask the question: like tomorrow, if they were going to go to the head coaching search, I, people immediately throw out names like Brian Dayball or Joe Brady because those are the media anointed offensive coordinators. Whatever, whatever. Even though I think both are very overrated. Are you going to replace Kyle Shanahan with the worst play caller and the worst play designer? And think that's no, no. What you do issue? is you hire Jeff Ireland and then get the hell out of the way. Exactly. But that's not what's going to happen. That's not what the Niners will do. They'll let Parag and Jed do it. And then someone like Jeff Ireland will be like, ooh, that's not. I don't want that job. And they'll get some second or third tier GM. And that's and then you'll just start over. Right. And but but that's the point. Right. Like you need to have an idea of. OK. And I, I think they tried to do that. The issue is that they gave it all to Kyle Shanahan instead right. of giving it all to more than one person. Right. And then Kyle Shanahan brought in John Lynch. And I, right. I, I still don't know what I mean, now that I'm going through the well, job. Well, search, again, right, but giving all the power to a 39 year old coach keeps Parag in power and Jed in power because wh- he doesn't have the stripes on his collar to really, you know, take over the way that Harbaugh or someone with a lot of wins under them could try to. Right. And, right? you know, I and, and the one thing I wanted to add, Grant, like I'm going through the jobs or I've been going through the job search. I know what it's like to put my resume out there. And I'm not comparing my job search to the hiring of a GM or anything, but in, in you're looking for someone to fill a job. And I cannot imagine how frustrated I would be if somebody like John Lynch who, you know, didn't even get a degree in computer science, picked up a software engineering job at Facebook over me. Like, right. I would be really upset. And, right. and that's celebrity. really where right. yeah. I'm seeing that. That's what I'm seeing right now. That's the perspective I have on it. Right. So I think, I don't know, if, if the Niners, here's the thing, let's end this, uh, this way. If the Niners miss the playoffs, they're going to have to make a change. I don't think the fans will really accept running it back a third time. And I think what they'll probably do is – fire the general manager, John Lynch, bring in a new general manager. Um, But I think this time, I don't know if it's going to work. It's probably the only move they have left, but you should probably hire someone who's qualified. See, I think if they bring in a GM though, it'll be someone that's worked with Kyle Shanahan in a previous spot. So like (laughs) Thomas Dimitrov, he was fired by the um, Falcons. He would be a name that I would kind of see because he knows Kyle Shanahan, knows the personality. Scott Pioli worked in Atlanta. He has okay. history of working in New Scott England. He's been around, yeah. He was, he was City for a while. Those are the kind of names. But to me, you got to get a guy that's in right now, that's having success right now, that has a clean vision of how to build and that's an organization not Scott because it moves too fast. 